Hello and welcome to Mile High Readverse. I'm Scott Anderson, and over the years, I've had a lot of Euphelia coral, mainly frog spawn and hammers. And I really love frog spawn and hammer corals because you can mix them together and create these really cool Euphelia gardens. Now, between frog spawn and hammers, they come in two different varieties. You have your wall varieties and your branching varieties. And I really prefer one to the other. So let's take a look at the differences between branching varieties and wall varieties. And remember, this is all based on my personal experience. The big difference between wall euphilias and branching euphilias is the skeleton shape. A wall euphilia is gonna be one big giant polyp. Now you will see how they kind of split off when they become huge colonies, but for the most part, you're gonna see one big polyp where the branching varieties have a skeleton that comes off in little branches, just as the name describes. In the branching varieties, there's gonna be a couple different shapes of branching corals. You're gonna have really thick, heavy branches, and you're gonna have the longer, thinner, skinnier branches. Both are really cool, but they give you a very different look to the coral. Also, the ones with the longer branches are easier to frag. Conversely, a wall hammer is just one big polyp, and it's absolutely stunning. It's not broken like a branching hammer. You don't have patches of polyps. You just have a sea of tentacles, and it's absolutely stunning. The downside to this sea of tentacles is if your wall hammer starts to decline. What will happen is your hammer will start to die off on one side or the other, and it'll slowly decline. This is less of a big deal when you're dealing with a branching variety because if you lose one head, it's not the end of the world. You can break a dead head off, or if you lose a head, it's unlikely to spread to the rest of the colony. Unfortunately, with a wall hammer, once the colony starts to decline, it's really hard to stop the spread. There are a couple more downsides to the wall hammers. First, they're much slower growing than their branching counterparts. And since they're slow growing, they're much less likely to be fragged. The other problem is they're much harder to frag. These guys cannot be fragged effectively without a wet saw. And not many of us have one. And let's face it, survival rates on these, even when fragged under the best conditions, are pretty low. So why would anybody buy a wall hammer? Well, size for the dollar, these guys are usually cheaper for larger colonies. One of the big reasons is they just don't get cut up because they're harder and they have a lower survival rate. The other really cool thing about wall hammers is they are usually some of the prettiest out there. They are usually available in color variants that are hard to find in their branching counterparts. And let's face it, that single polyp is a look that is really hard to beat. When buying Euphelia, I tend to lean towards the branching variety. They're generally much easier to find, as you'll see them more often in your shop. The branching variety are much hardier. If you lose a head, it's not the end of the world. You can trim it off and start over. Then they also grow a lot faster. The wall hammers that I've had, I've had for years, and I've seen absolutely no growth out of them. While I've started off with small colonies of the branching varieties that have grown to large colonies that I've fragged, that I've moved to multiple tanks. So there's a big bonus when it comes to growth. But all that being said, in my tanks going forwards, I will probably always have wall and branching varieties in my tank. Yes, I'm a Euphelia nut. Thank you for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.